Hi guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World on uh, Medium YouTube and at DanielRosal.Tech. So today's video continuing the uh, the uh, setup and discovery process on this uh, exciting new Synology uh, DS920 Plus network attached storage device. I'm just going to log into that quickly. Is looking at uh, the active backup set of tools. Uh, so there's a few. I actually have put them all on with Package Manager. Um, which is found in DSM and DSM for those new to Synology and I'm by no means a Synology veteran in fact the opposite I'm a newbie uh, that is just learning what all these interesting things do so there's uh, there's three active backup tools uh, that are uh, in the main packages screen they're not beta packages which is a smaller list uh, just all packages and you have active backup for business active backup for G Suite and active backup for uh, 365 Office 365 um, so the two that I'm going to be taking a look at are uh, Active Backup for Business and just to jump into that for a second uh, there is an agent that you can run on a Windows target so what I'm, what I'm interested in doing is just seeing uh, if I can use this guy to back up my Windows VM uh, my virtual machine which I keep in VMware um, I do actually have a Windows bare metal installed but uh, I would need a fixed grub, and to be honest, I'm not. I'm not tempted to back that up. I would like. To, I would be much more interested in protecting uh, the VM because, um, to be honest, I almost never use the Windows bare metal anymore. Um, <coughs> but the one to look at today is Active Backup for G Suite. I'm not interested in 365 because I don't use 365, but I do use G Suite. In fact, I have two uh, current active G Suite accounts. So the first thing after I've opened it up is it's, acting, it's, it's asking for authorization. It's telling me firstly that uh, Active Backup for G Suite supports backing up multiple uh, domains. So that's good news. So I can back up the two, but I'm just going to firstly set it up on my on my primary account. All right. So I put in the domain I'm backing up and I put in my domain administrator email address, which is just me. And now it's looking for a thing called a service key. So I've just gone ahead and uh, taken a read through Synology's documentation, how to obtain authorization for Google, for using Active Backup for G Suite, and uh, just to quickly run through that process, log into, as you would expect, G Suite Admin Console, uh, Features, Drive and Docs. Now, bear in mind that I'm just, I'm coming at this, uh, I'm coming at this for the first time. So I'm just trying to see exactly what this backs up. Now my main backup uh, that I currently use um, for G Suite is Google Takeout. Now I've looked at a few of the um, options on the market for uh, for taking you know these automated G Suite backups. So you have a lot of. I mean, you can just search for G Suite backup and, for that matter, 365 backup. And there is an entire industry of providers. Uh, Acronis have a tool. Backupify have a tool. Spanning uh, a lot of tools covering G Suite and covering 365 cloud to cloud backup so typically they'll automatically go into your G Suite uh, and they'll back it up now my first question is what are you backing up in G Suite uh, so if I do a Google Takeout and Google Takeout is like the automated engine for backing up uh, G Suite or for extracting your data I'm not going to go into some uh, the semantics of what's a backup what's a snapshot what's an archive uh, but Google Takeout is very very granular and what I like about it is you get everything so for instance these you this YouTube video which I'm currently recording um, is going to go up to YouTube obviously now using Google Takeout I can pull out all my YouTube data because YouTube is part of the Google you know online services in my G Suite and uh, on the negative side that'll make my takeouts heavy because mp4 is a relatively heavy files um, on the plus side I know that when I'm running a takeout I'm getting absolutely everything out of Google so that's why these guys haven't attracted to me that much because they typically focus on some G Suite functionalities such as Gmail calendar contacts drive the kind of things to be honest you'd expect would be of interest to an enterprise environment where you might have a few hundred users on a uh, G Suite installation and uh, you know in that kind of a backup scenario it wouldn't really be appropriate uh, to be backing up the YouTube videos on everybody's account. That's just not something that wouldn't really be a business tool. Um, so I'm just curious as to see what's, what this is going to actually do. And uh, we are going to shortly find out. So I'm just going to have a look at this documentation and get things running on the G Suite site. All right, so we're this far in the uh, setup journey. 
so far. Now it wants me. I've gone. I've gone into my Google admin over here. I've gone into uh, Google Drive, and it wants me to um, uh, to allow users to access Google Drive with the G Drive SDK API. So if you look at Drive API, sorry API uh, for SDK for the Drive SDK specifically, that's already turned on. So I can skip this step. Next thing the instructions have asked me to do is go into uh, Google Developers uh, Console. I'm just gonna activate this. It looks like my Google Cloud. I still have some uh, some time remaining. Um, now select a project, hit New Project and call the project Active Backup for G Suite. So I've gone ahead and done that. Project name is Active Backup for G Suite. It's in my organization. It has a project ID and uh, I'm just gonna click the Create button. Okay, so it's told me to go into the project. So I've gone ahead and clicked into my project in Google Developer Console. Uh, please select the project you created. Go to Library and search for the APIs listed as follows. Admin SDK, Contacts API, Gmail API, all right, so this is pretty much telling me what's going to be backed up if these are the APIs we'll be needing. Uh, admin, contacts, Gmail, calendar, drive, and it tells it asks me to enable them one by one. So I'm just going to go ahead, find those APIs in the library for this project, and I will enable them. So I'm pretty much mirroring the uh, screenshots in the in Synology's documentation right now. A couple of clicks took me to this uh, landing page. Welcome to the API library. And uh, I don't see a better way than just searching for each API and just enabling them one by one. So that is the methodology I'm going to use. This is what you do: you search for them one by one. There is an enable button, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to take a take a guess that you click the enable button. Something you might want to do, just a quick tip to save time rather than going back and forth, is just to duplicate this tab. So I'm going to actually duplicate it. So I've done admin one, two, three. One, two, three, four, four remaining APIs. I'm just going to duplicate this tab uh, four times uh, so that I don't need to constantly be shuffling back and forth. And I will resume the video once I have enabled all these APIs. All right, so that should be it. I've gone ahead and enabled those four APIs. Okay, after enabling the APIs in the upper left corner of the console, go to um, IAM and admin service accounts, create service accounts. Okay, it says enter service account name as you please and uh, then so I'm just going to call this Synology Backup as you please service account ID is going to be the same at that at your API and then click on create next I need to assign the right permissions to this account and its owner permissions you can see here so you have service account permissions um, by default, that's not going to have permissions. So I want to make it the owner of this project, the backup project. So just the first one is project, and the third option down is full access to all resource. Click on that, and then press on continue. Next thing in the uh, documentation is it's told me to uh, create a key. So I actually needed to get out of that uh, window in order to get to this. But I can see here, it's not hard to work out service accounts we can see the Synology backup service account that I just created. And if I click on to actions, uh, the third option in the drop down will be create key. So I'm going to go ahead and create that key. Options are for JSON, which is recommended, or P12. Backward compatibility with code using P12 format. No idea what P12 is, never heard of it. But uh, I do know that uh, Synology was looking for a JSON file, so that is fine. So I'm going to create the JSON key. All right, and as you can see, um, a key file called dot j with the extension dot json, uh, a private key has just downloaded, and that's going to be on my desktop. So I think that that is all that is required because I know uh, that Synology is looking for my key. So I hope that's the access credential. But let me see what else Synology recommend. Indeed, there are unfortunately more steps. So step uh, step eleven is click show service wide uh, show service domain wide delegation tick the checkbox um, and click active so I'm just going to do that too so I just clicked on the email address in order to get in get back into service accounts you can see there's a nice drop down here called show domain wide delegation I'm gonna click on that and you can see that it was not enabled by default so I'm gonna enable that so my mind could not rest without enabling this checkbox so I w was able to find this uh, this Stack Overflow thread, and uh, this Liron here says, 
uh, if you don't see the checkbox it means you don't need to enable it you can get the client ID from the UI or by looking at the JSON private file and you uh, use that to authorize your scopes in the admin console uh, so I'm going to take a look at the JSON and see if there is indeed a client uh, ID in that or else if not I'll try to find that from the UI so indeed as uh, Liron and Stack Overflow said or Liron I should say uh, I presume he's uh, Israeli and that's how you say Liron in Hebrew is that weird R sound um, so I uh, have got that client ID now on my notepad so I can proceed with the installation all right, we're hopefully getting close now to the end. We're on step uh, 12 is getting the client ID, which we've done. It's now on my notepad from the JSON. Uh, and 13, log into your Google Admin Console. We are already in there. Um, go into Security, Advanced Settings, Manage API Access. Okay, so we have Manage API Access towards the bottom of the Security Settings in the G Suite Admin. Okay, so for the client name, it's asking for uh, the client ID we just pulled out. From step 12 and then you're going to have to copy and paste one by one uh, the different APIs that this guy is supposed to have access to uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that process the nice thing about this is uh, that it allows you to uh, copy them in comma delimited format and uh, Synology has got a little comma at the end of each so I'm hoping this will just parse directly but we will quickly find out when we click the authorize button Indeed, it is my lucky day, and uh, we can see uh, that the new API client has been added, and the permissions to the various Google APIs are there. So I must say to Synology's credit that their documentation so far cannot be faulted. It's very good. All right, now it says it may take some time to export the key, uh, but when it is ready, please use the locally stored key generated in step eight to continue, uh, I'm pretty sure it just means the that JSON. Uh, we created a key, yeah, we took it out in JSON, so I'm not sure why it says it'll take a while because uh, we got it. So I've gone back to DSM, I'm gonna take my chances that that was indeed the JSON file and put it up. All right, JSON file is here and we're gonna try to upload this now. Sorry, we're gonna try to proceed, it, it has been uploaded. All right, it says connected to the cloud and uh, I so far so good it appears to have connected um, so now it says task name backup destination and backup list and you can see one user is uh, is backed up uh, and uh, we have as I, as I suspected the option uh, includes just drive mail contacts and calendar enable active backup I guess that means a recurring task so uh, backup destination I presume it's going to look, look through my uh, folder shares in which case uh, I am going to go ahead and create a dedicated uh, folder share. Indeed as I suspected the backup destination was one of our buckets. So we've gone ahead and given it the unimaginative name of G Suite Backup DR. I like to keep all these various backups in different shares just uh, while I'm testing things out at least and I'm going to call it Daniel's uh, Daniel G Suite Backup. Uh, account discovery settings are good so I can click next. And look at these lovely options. We can go for a continuous backup, manual backup, or scheduled backup. Now, I don't like the idea of continuous backup because uh, we can see what it says. Uh, any modifications backed up in a few minutes? Yeah, I don't, I don't need my NAS continuously pooling all my small changes to G Suite, such as adding contacts. Scheduled backup will be more than good enough for my needs. So you can set it to... Uh, now, here's one thing I don't like about Synology DSM. I don't know why they don't have simply daily, monthly, yearly, whatever. Their options, the scheduling options are always seem a bit weird to me. Like weekends is not how I would really think of it. I, like I can configure a seven day interval or every 10 days. And to me, that's a bit weak. Um, but let's say, let's run it on a, uh, on a Sunday and not on a Saturday. Why not the start of the week? Uh, first run time midnight uh, is fine. Uh, actually, I like to do my, I like to do all backup things in the middle of the night while I tend to be sleeping, just in case it causes any slowdown or whatsoever. So 4 a.m. depends how nocturnal you are. For me, 4 a.m. lately is not such a safe bet. But for most people on a normal uh, circadian rhythm, 4 a.m. is good. So I'm gonna just select that as frequency, and uh, that is fine gives me a little summary that it's going to be backing up to G Suite Backup DR, the task name, etc. And it looks like I'm ready to just finally click apply. All right, so it's applied that and it's given me the option to take the backup now. I'm going to, head, going to go ahead and let it run its first backup. 
So things are sort of uh, happening. This is this is raw. I've never done this before. Uh, I did not set it up and try it before I made this video. So whether this works or not, I'm not clear of. I'm hoping it works. And if it does work, how do I rate that uh, setup job? A uh, little bit more difficult than I would like and that many users would like. Uh, obviously, if you're doing this in an enterprise environment and you're an IT professional, uh, those steps would not be too troublesome. And even for me, it wasn't overly troublesome, but nonetheless, it was still a 14-step uh, process that required going into Google Dev Console and setting all that stuff up. So I'm gonna, gonna, gonna go ahead and put minimize this uh, on my uh, DSM over here, and I'm gonna just see, I'm gonna go try and cheat a bit uh, and see if stuff is running. So there's a few screens in Active Backup for G Suite. You can see the summary. You have a log uh, activities over here. One user, one drive, and uh, not really much, a ton of detail, but you can imagine if you're using this, as I said again, for many, many different users, this would be useful. So I've navigated into my file station and I always take a sneak peek at uh, backup jobs before getting my hopes too far up. And you can see G Suite Backup DR well, it's done something. It's created a folder called Active Backup for G Suite. It's created. A I can go into Drive, and uh, it's in the process, from what I can see, of uh, building out the backup. But it does look to me as if it's run. I'm going to go ahead and call this a success. Uh, I will check back and update the video description. But that is essentially uh, the setup process for setting up G Suite Backup to your Synology. As I said, a 14-step process. Um, which you know might seem like a lot uh, depending on your level of comfort with technology um, but it did uh, it did allow me to set this up and I can also configure a syncing schedule and that's pulling down from G Suite onto my NES clicking into this <coughs> and we can see it's uh, effectively building stuff up uh, the backup and if I go into the voice notes voice notes uh, setting I am down to the level of individual files and I can download these uh, so I can just now verify that the backup has been successful and it's running. Thanks again for watching.